In this video, we're going to talk about vapor pressure. So what is vapor pressure? Well, let's use an example to illustrate it. Let's say if we have a beaker that contains some water and it's closed up. And initially, there's no water vapor inside this area. So there's no water molecules in the air. So therefore, the partial pressure of water is currently zero. So it's basically a vacuum above the liquid water surface. Now let's say the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. What's going to happen? Some of the water molecules will evaporate into the vapor phase. The rate of evaporation is dependent on the temperature. If you increase the temperature, the rate of evaporation increases. So the evaporation will be constant at 25 degrees Celsius. So now after some time has passed, maybe a minute or two, we're going to have some water molecules in the air. So I'm going to represent it with a circle. And let's say that the partial pressure of water inside this area is now 15 torr. So water will continue to evaporate at the same rate because the temperature is still 25 degrees Celsius. Now, since we have some water molecules in the air already, some of it will condense back into the liquid phase. And so we have evaporation and condensation occurring at the same time. However, notice I have three arrows going up, two arrows going down. So that means that the rate of evaporation exceeds the rate of condensation. The rate of condensation depends on the temperature and also on the pressure as well. The more molecules that you have in the vapor phase, the greater the rate of condensation will be. Now at some point, we're going to have a lot of molecules in the air. And the rate of evaporation is still the same. But at some point, it's going to equal the rate of condensation. So we have three arrows going up, three arrows going down. And now, the vapor pressure, or rather, the partial pressure of water, is 23.8 torr at this point. Now, when the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation, so let me write that. So when evaporation equals condensation, the partial pressure is now defined as the vapor pressure. So this partial pressure of water at 23.8 torr at this temperature is also the vapor pressure of water because at that point the rate of condensation equals the rate of evaporation. So vapor pressure is an equilibrium pressure. It's the partial pressure at which the rate of condensation equals the rate of evaporation. Now it's important to distinguish the partial pressure of water with the vapor pressure of water. For the most part, the partial pressure of water can have many values. It can be 0, it can be 15, it could be 23.8, it could be 100, it could be 500, it could be 45.73. So the partial pressure, it can be many values. However, the vapor pressure of water has a specific value at a given temperature. So all of these values are partial pressures of water. However, this particular value is the vapor pressure of water, only because the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. So I'm going to define it one more time. The vapor pressure of a, a liquid or of a substance is the partial pressure at which the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. So hopefully by now you have a good understanding of what it is. So it's a specific partial pressure value when these conditions are met. 
Now you need to understand the relationship between temperature and the vapor pressure of water. Okay, that line is just not straight. At 20 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 17.5 torr. At 25 Celsius, it's about 23.8 torr. At 40 Celsius, it's 55.3 torr. At 60 Celsius, it's 149.4 torr. And at 90 Celsius, it's about 525.8 torr. What do you think the vapor pressure of water will be at 100 degrees Celsius? The vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is 760 torr. Now, this leads us to the definition of the normal boiling point of a liquid. The normal boiling point of a liquid is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm or 760 torr. And at 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is 760 torr. So the normal boiling point of water at sea level is 100 degrees Celsius. So we can see that as temperature increases, the vapor pressure increases. So as we saw in the table, the relationship between pressure and temperature is not a direct linear relationship. As the temperature increased, we saw that the pressure began to increase at a greater rate. Now granted, that was the temperature in Celsius, but there's a formula that relates vapor pressure and temperature, and it's known as the clausius clapeyron equation. Ln P2 over P1 is equal to negative, this is the enthalpy of vaporization, over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So if you have, let's say, a temperature and a pressure, and you want to find a new vapor pressure at a different temperature, you could use this formula. Now we're going to talk about this formula uh, later in the full version of this video. If you want access to the full version, uh, simply take a look at the description section below and you'll find a link leading you there. So now let's talk about elevation. So let's say here this is a mountain. Actually, let me draw this better. So let's say this is a mountain and here we have a valley. And let's say this is the ocean. So at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm. And let's say at the top of this mountain, the atmospheric pressure is 526 torr. And let's say at this valley, it's about 900 torr. At sea level, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius because the vapor pressure of water is equal to 1 atm or 760 torr. At a partial pressure or at an atmospheric pressure of 526 torr, the vapor pressure is equal to that number when the temperature is 90. So therefore, the boiling point of water at the top of this mountain is about 90 degrees Celsius. Because at that temperature, the vapor pressure of water is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Recall that in that table, at 90 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure was about 525.8 torr. So if the atmospheric pressure is 526 torr, that's approximately equal to the vapor pressure, which means the boiling point of water will be 90. Now what about the valley? Notice that the pressure is higher than 760 torr 
which is at sea level. So at a pressure of 900 torr, the boiling point is going to be above 100. So it's going to be maybe like 105. So what you need to realize is that as you go up, as you increase in elevation, the boiling point decreases. So the boiling point is lower at the top of a mountain. It's very easy to boil water if you're on a mountain. But if you're in a valley that is below sea level, it's, it takes more energy to boil water. So we know that if we increase the temperature, the vapor pressure will increase. Now, if we increase the elevation, we know that the boiling point of that substance will decrease. So make sure you realize that boiling point and elevation are inversely related. And by the way, as you increase the elevation, the atmospheric pressure will decrease. And so therefore, the boiling point decreases with it as well.